what Joe Rogan is for podcasts and Tucker is for cable TV. I agree. Period. Right? Agree. Okay. So at this point, you've made money. Uh, uh, you have a lot of haters. You have a lot of fans. You have a lot of true believers. You know what you want and what you don't want. You're living a life where, you know, the, the way you're doing everything, your podcast, your show, you get to dictate your terms. And you're seeing what's going on in politics today. And, and, and this is the part. This is the part you have to be thinking about. And I've seen this happen, different types of things to different people. There's one group that you see people at that age that they've been disappointed and hurt so many times that they trust fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer people in their life. And you almost become cold. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by cold is, I mean literally, you become cold. Nothing is attractive when somebody says something to you because all you think about is, that's also what they said to me. Yeah. That's also what that guy said to me. Mm -hmm. And that's also what this person said to me. Bullshit, you're just like the other person. Mm -hmm. But it sounds good. It sounds yeah. convincing. So you're more, you're harder to convince, you're harder to crack, you're harder to persuade. You know, the typical things that maybe got you excited. Hey, we're going to pay you $2.5 million a year for five years. They're like, what can't I buy with the current life that I have? Everything. But I do think to some people, when this happens, you sit there and you ask yourself, I'm really concerned about what's going on with America. I'm really concerned with what's going on with certain things during COVID. A lot of stuff was exposed. You either become such a deep, true believer that your fight is not for a real reason. Mm -hmm. You're a parent. You have all these other things that's going on with you. I think Tucker's a true believer today. And there's 100%. a part of him that he's sitting there saying, I give all this stuff to Fox for all these years. I gave you the number one show. I'm not number two. I'm not number four. I'm not number eight. You know what it takes to be number one? Let me tell you what it takes to be number one. You have to read every story. You have to read every book. You have to follow what everybody else is doing. You have to study history books. You have to go do hours on top of hours on Saturday while everybody's kicking it, golfing, you're reading articles. On Sunday morning while everybody is kicking it, relaxing, sleeping in, you're reading articles. The number one of any space does things that number two doesn't do or three or five even dreams about. This is a guy that's willing to do the work, willing to put in the legwork, is smart, is intelligent, is funny, is sarcastic, and is still young at 53. And you're now sitting there saying, what do I do next? Well, if, if, if he's a crusade guy and he loves America as much as he shows that he loves America, I, I think the next phase may be a, he has one or two choices. Do I chase the billions? Do I go make a few hundred million dollars? Because he hasn't made a few hundred million dollars yet. He hasn't made that kind of money before. Mm. Do I go after that? Or do I kind of step up right now, run for office? Or do I go somewhere, get equity? What do I do? Or all these people that I've had to answer to, maybe I'm going to do my own thing today, and I'm going to build my own Fox. I'm going to build my own CN. These are the things that he's thinking about himself. But he can go any of those directions, and he'll succeed. But you better believe a guy that's going to be pitching him today, it's not going to be the pitch from the movie air. It's going to be a very different pitch. Really? Oh, air, air, like, air you're pitching to a 19-year-old. Oh, yeah, good. Well, it, to it, the parents it, of the 19-year-old. But the pa those parents have never seen money before. Yeah. Those parents have never gotten real money before. They still live in the same house that they've lived in for five generations, mm -hmm. the Jordan family. This guy's seen money before. This guy's seen everything before. And he also knows he's the best of the best of the best today. Mm -hmm. So how long will that last? What am I going to do with it? Those are some of the things he's thinking about. Tom. I, I agree with that because it's, it's like this is now a chapter that um, I kind of I see it as, you know, there are certain proxies that you see every now and then in professional sports. Um, Brady went to Tampa and was successful. Um, by the way, I, I think... Tucker's got a lot more than three seasons left in his bag. Yeah, yeah of course. Baby, he's got, I think he's got 20. I think Tucker realistically has 15 to 20 seasons yeah. left. Peyton he, Manning went to, went to Denver and was the last piece that they need. But he did it on his terms. And he had three fantastic seasons. And I think Tucker's got that kind of an opportunity. At a, this, I believe, in many ways, they may have done him a favor. You know why? Because everything I was reading this weekend, media is changing. It is changing. And in many ways, I think he has been given a tremendous opportunity at a time where all these media 
outlets are are struggling. Mm -hmm. And you, you, everybody, you have to remember, BuzzFeed at one point, I believe, was worth $1.6 billion. Today, it's valued at slightly less than $100 million. That's crazy. That's fucking And crazy. they're on the market right now. Yeah. That's, it's, it's $82 million today, 81.69. By the way, speaking of, of money, because how much money is going to be a factor for Tucker? Because I'm looking at the highest paid cable news talk show host. You know who number one is? It's not even close. Sean Hannity. Number one. I think he makes $45 million a year. His net worth $250 million. It's according to Yahoo News. There's a lot of Yahoo uh, yeah. articles out there. Uh, I mean that sarcastically, but what you can't really... Uh, trust everything you see online, but you know we'll, we'll go with Yahoo on this. Number two, Anderson Cooper makes 12 million bucks a year. Number three, Laura Ingram, she makes 15 a year. Her net worth is 40 million. Number four, Rachel Maddow, MSNBC, and number five, Tucker makes eight million dollars a year. It could have been he might have had an adjustment in his contract recently, as of 2022. Net worth only 30 million because there's other reports with that. How much is money going to be a factor? I mean, if you're going to get Tucker. You got to pay him eight to ten million dollars a year minimum. What do you think? You, what do you think of what? Like how, how, how much, much he's gonna? How much is demand? money gonna be a factor yes, for him? For him. It's not about how much is money gonna be a factor for him. There is money being a factor. There is that's what you're worth. Period. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Look, my market value is X Y Z today. And here's what I'm willing to do for X, Y, Z today. I can bring this, I can do this, and I can do this. And here's what I'd like this thing to be structured as. I'm willing to do five days a week. I'm willing to do this, 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 that. You know, th there's a lot of creative ways right now on what to, uh, uh, what offer to make to a guy like Tucker. Mm -hmm. I got two guys call me, uh, uh, texting me, asking, hey, you know, if, if we were to structure an offer for him, how would you structure it for a guy like Tucker? And uh, there's, there's different ways to structure, uh, but it's not going to be money. Uh, for him, at this point, because one guy said, oh, he's going to go to Newsmax, okay? He's going to go to Newsmax because it's the, uh, you know, right-leaning. That's, that's where he's going to go next. It's going to be Newsmax. Oh, no, no. He's going to go to Daily Wire because he's going to go there to team up with Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens, Jordan Peterson. He's going to go there. No, no, no. He's going to go to Rumble. You know, those guys are a publicly traded company. Two and a half billion dollars. They're going to throw money at him. They'll come out of nowhere and go raise capital and give money at him. And he's going to go to Rumble. No, no, no. He's going to go do his own thing with Daily Caller. He doesn't need to go to him. There's so many different things that you're talking about. Today, Tucker gets to sit down with his wife mm -hmm. and the people he respects and says, here's what I want. Okay? What do you think I should do? Well, I think you should consider this and this and this and this. Okay? Do you still want to create shows? Yes. Do you want to go politics? I have no desire to politics. Do you want to start a company? I don't want to start a company. I like my life. Starting a company, uh, uh, starting politics, starting a company, it's, it's a terrible life when you start a company. You don't have a break. Mm -hmm. You know, like, hey, I'm going to go take a two-week PTO. Good luck starting a company. Mm -hmm. There's no PTO when you start a company. It's a very different thing. Does he want to do that? I, I don't know. I think, I think, you know, look at Michael being a player versus an owner. What was he better at? Playing, obviously. It's not even – Tucker's a player. Yes. Can he own equity? Can he have investments? Mm -hmm. Can he have equity in a deal like a William Shatner price line? Mm -hmm. Okay, like a you know Kobe Bryant water. Uh, uh, what is the vitamin water or yeah. fifty cents? Fifty cents. Yeah. yeah. So these guys, the, the equity play is the way to make the money without having to do the day-to-day -day stuff of operating. Mm -hmm. So, but there there would be many creative ways. Tucker's got to take the next. If I'm Tucker right now. I'm taking a week off, and I'm telling everybody, I'm good, man. Give me a week. I'm spending time with the wife, and I'm hanging out with the family, and I'm doing my own thing, and then sitting there talking to the 10 people I trust the most, and I'm inviting them over to my house. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there talking. I'm saying, so what do you think? And, and in a way, you're going to bring those people not to ask them what do you think. They're going to be asking you questions, okay? And uh, uh, good friends in your life will ask you questions, and they're going to prompt thought that made thoughts you didn't have before. And then he's going to say, okay, well, this is maybe my next move that I'm thinking about doing. Great. Then let's mm -hmm. go play ball. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.